Well, then, my master... You know, not to call you a coward, master, but sometimes cowards do survive. You're a Dorito, Starscream. I know. I get that all the time. Spare me! Sup, guys? And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the old Transformers Studio Series 31 Voyager Class Revenge of the Fallen Battle Damage Megatron. Now, this figure is a straight up repaint of the original Megatron that came out. And the original release was good enough itself. But then Hasbro decided to take it a whole nother level and re release him, but in a battle damaged way. And I gotta say, I like this. I really like the paint job. And this figure happens to have a different head mold than this figure because, of course, it's to represent Optimus Prime shooting him. One nitpick I have about this guy is that he should have came with a swappable arm, so that way you could have both arms. However, there is an upgrade kit for this figure and this figure, and that upgrade kit is really cool. I won't go deep down into that upgrade kit that much, but it does come with the swappable arms, so if you could ever find that, I suggest you get it. Now, I believe this guy was a Target exclusive during his release. Of course, this figure sold out probably after the time of his release, which was like, what, 2019 or something? But anyways, last year, Target was re-releasing this guy, and at one point, they had him on clearance for a good old $19. After that, the figure sold out, and now he's very expensive. Same thing with this guy. At one point in 2020, on Amazon, you could have gotten this guy for $34.99. Now, he's pretty expensive. But hey, maybe they'll re-release him. Who knows what, they'll probably do more premium finish figures. And this figure right here would be a really great candidate for the premium finish. Anyways, painting and sculpting on this figure, pretty cool. I like how he has a whole bunch of burnt areas to resemble his defeat, his humiliating defeat to Optimus. However... In the movie, his arm got cut off when he was all battle damaged and everything, but Hasbro decided to keep the gun intact, even though this was a repaint of the battle damage Megatron. Eh, it's not bad. While this figure has exquisite mechanical detail, there is a hollow gap on his back. With the upgrade kit, however, he comes with these uh, articulated wings for the alternate mode that just connect somewhere around here, and then stuff somewhere inside over there. Also, for some reason, the back over here has a little issue where I try to push it back. Huh, that's interesting. It actually pushed back in. For some reason, my copy had a problem where you push it all the way in, and it would... Oh, there it is. It would untab the arms right here, which is kind of a bit of an issue. And then when you try to tab the arms back in, the back would uh, stick out like that, and it would... Uh, yeah, do that. But, now that I am filming this video, it does not want to do it for some reason. I guess it doesn't want to embarrass itself with flaws as I post this on social media. So with that hypothesis developed in mind, does that create a theory that figures have feelings? No, I don't think so. And I was just joking over there. <laughs> Anyways, before I start speaking nonsense, let's talk about his accessories. So, he comes with a big cannon, and I think it looks pretty cool. The details are pretty immaculate. You're so weak. Pew! <laughs> oh, cool thing about this figure is that you could actually open up the sword, and yeah, the gun turns into a melee weapon. With this figure's weapon, it's a little weird because the sword is kind of pointed all the way up to the point where it messes up the vision of the gun, so you can put it down a bit. But then the sword would look lopsided, so yeah. Honestly, I don't see that as much of an issue. And he also comes with mini mortars that go on the back of his shoulders for some reason. I don't think that was in the movie, though. Whatever. It's a... He collapsed. It's a cool feature. Yeah, this guy kind of comes in loaded, which is pretty cool. Anyways, let's just get down to size comparison. Starting off, here he is next to the original... Studio series Revenge of the Fallen Megatron, Soundwave, Sideways, Starscream, Grinder, The Fallen, Revenge of the Fallen Optimus, 07 Optimus, 07 Megatron, 
Sentinel Prime, Shockwave, which is a figure that has a few parts from this guy, 3D Megatron, which should have had the Fusion Cannon, Galvatron, and lastly Scourge. Now I wanted to do a size comparison with this guy and this guy because Scourge over here is $54.99 and this guy was $29.99. And these two guys' heights are pretty similar. Anyways, let's just get down to articulation. Ball joint at the head which can make the figure's head swivel and move up and down, and head can move forward. Mini mortars can move around, shoulder can detach, which is for transformation, but it allows for an unintentional butterfly joint. Full rotation at the arm, bicep swivel, bent at the shoulder, fingers can articulate, and for this side with the fusion cannon, there is a thumb that can move out, which is weird, but whatever. Also, there's no wrist swivel for this hand and no waist swivel. Legs can spread, leg can move forward, can move backward, thigh swivel. This annoying and removable piece can move up and down. Hinge joint over here and hinge joint over here, which allows for a chicken hinge. Foot can tilt and split open, but it doesn't really work, it's silly. If you want, you can move the heel upward and you can move this piece that has a very nice finish right here and this piece up, but mind you, that's all for transformation. Now, before I get into the transformation, in my previous review, I forgot to, eat. I forgot to add the articulation for Starscream, at least for the legs, so I'll just give it anyways. There's an up and down, he goes, it, unintentional butterfly joint for the leg, this moves up, this moves up. Swivel over here, foot moves up, but I think that's for transformation. Same thing with this wheel over here, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Anyways, with that said and done, let's get down to transformation, and I think I need to extend the camera a bit. Now, honestly, I think it would just be better if we started off with the legs. So what you're going to do first, you're going to split these two legs apart. Equilibrium destabilized. I got that from G1, no questions asked. Right here, you're just going to go ahead, slide that in, close this up. Move that piece down, and move this piece down as well. Oh, I forgot. You gotta make sure that's under over there. Move this. Wait, hold up. Move this out, and then rotate the leg. Ah, I knew that was gonna happen. Same process implies for the other leg. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna open this up, straighten this whole flat piece out. What you're gonna do is make sure you straighten the arms, move this down. Same thing with the other side, and then what you're going to do is you're just going to go ahead and close in the arms, make sure this flat piece, hold up, hold up, hold up, before you push the flat piece down, you got to make sure this tab right there pegs into that slot, and this slot pegs into that tab right there, and then you can go ahead and close everything in. Next off, what you're going to do is you're going to tab the leg, oh my goodness, everything's dark, that slot, I that slot right there is going to peg into that tab uh, like so and then same thing for the other leg for some reason I'm having trouble anyways you're going to move the head up like that and you're just going to go ahead and close in everything like so last but not least you're just going to open up the mini mortars and yeah there you go and here we have the tank mode or metal slug whatever you want and honestly I prefer this over whatever Megatron transformed into in the first movie. And this tank has exquisite mechanical detail because everything is just metal on top of metal and burnt metal on top of burnt metal. The only inaccurate thing about this figure is that he does not come with any sort of wings that spread out or fold in. Which is a bummer, but it's not that bad. Also, there's this, where there's this thing pointing out, so if he reverses dramatically backward into something and stabs it, then yeah. If he needs a boost, he could just use his cannon and then go Psh! And the bottom is, well, the bottom. If you want, you could orientate those top parts right there, so it looks like he's locked on to something. Maybe even move them up? Probably not. This, this is fine, the way it is. Or this which looks a little boring, but whatever. And there's no articulation for the cannon whatsoever, unless you do this, which doesn't really count. But in the leader class, original Revenge of the Fallen Megatron, there was a part where you could untab the whole cannon section so he could move around, 
Whereas this one, no. You might as well just break the whole thing while you're at it. Which is a bad thing. Don't do that. Also, I do like how this figure has some wheels as well. Which don't really make him roll because sometimes it's like that. That happens when you transform something and it's kind of annoying. Eh, whatever. It ain't that bad. Overall, I think this looks really cool. Speaking of overall, I think this figure overall is pretty good. If you're looking for a studio series, Revenge of the Fallen Megatron, then this version is definitely the one to pick up. After all, he does come with a lot of weathering, dry brush paint, maybe, and a menacing battle damage head. Anyways, if you like what you saw in this video, be sure to slam that like button, and be sure to share it with your friends. But, most importantly, be sure to hit that big red button, and uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. See ya!